Hi, this is Mike with TP TV, and in front of me here is my post-war Hungarian-made Mosinagant PU sniper rifle. Now, uh, these are probably the most common Second World War type sniper rifles that are out there on the market. Uh, there's a lot of real ones, Russian wartime ones, uh, sold block post-war like this one, and uh, a lot of fakes out there. Now, uh, we're not worried about the distinction between real ones and fake ones today. What we're interested in is the mount. You can even buy repro mounts from... Uh, AliExpress, for instance, you can order them from China and they'll come with a cheap, low-quality uh, Chinese PU reproduction scope. Now, um, whether you've got a real rifle or a fake rifle, if you understand how the mount works, you can set it up to get the best performance out of it and have the best possible time with it. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, before we get into the nitty-gritty details of the mount, first of all, the scope, because the two very much go together. Now, uh, from the outside, this one is a... Uh, Russian commercial later scope. I'm uh, going to try and find myself a, a real one to go with this. This was changed out at some point. Now um, you've got an elevation drum here that adjusts for elevation. The, uh, the military ones are scaled in hundreds of meters. This one's uh, scaled in some milliradian thing. And on the left you've got windage adjustment. Now unlike a modern scope, when you make an adjustment, like here I'm winding the elevation drum, it's the reticle that moves. So the pointer, if I make an adjustment to the right, the pointer moves left. Now a lot of the not properly set up mounts, when they're zeroed at 100 yards, they end up with the pointer off to the left and quite high up like this. And uh, that's because the mount's not been set up correctly. Now uh, basically what you want to do is set up the mount so that when you're zeroed for 100 yards or meters or 300 or whatever distance you normally shoot at that the pointer is more or less in the middle so this is my zero for 300 meters and as you can see it's more or less in the middle at least it's close enough for government work i could probably fiddle it a bit but uh, it's close enough that it makes no difference now because the reticle moves instead of the lenses when you make an adjustment inside the scope what we're going to do is we're going to make the fine adjustment with the drums up here, and finds a bit of a relative term because these are really, really stiff. And then the course adjustment we're going to do on the mount. Now, uh, this is a detachable mount, but it is not a quick detachable mount. What you've got is a big clamping screw here, and then you've got a pair of opposed screws here that deal with elevation. Now, uh, to deal with this mount, you're going to need a big screwdriver and a medium screwdriver. So the first thing we're going to do is decide which of these two screws, because they're basically identical, is going to be used as a reference for the zero and which we're going to use to clamp. Now, what I do is I use the top one as a reference and the bottom one to clamp and unclamp because it's more easily accessible. I mean, uh, yeah, you can get at it, but you can't really screw it down. That screwdriver is not quite straight. So what we do to get it off is we take the screw we've decided we're going to use to clamp, loosen it off so that it's no longer holding that, and then we take our big screwdriver and then we just loosen that off, and holding the mount because it'll flop around, we unscrew it, and then the mount just pivots off like that and you can see that you've got a surface there that the screw bears on. Now uh, what you don't want to do is when it's clamped down like this you don't want to try making an adjustment by uh, pushing that up because these, this, is, uh, this is not Krupp steel, this is uh, reasonably soft and uh, if you've got this big clamping screw screwed down you're just going to start stripping threads and stripping screws and damaging that surface. So let's take it off and there you go. Now uh, what we've got here at the front of the mount is we've got a ball and socket joint. So we have a ball on the rifle here, on the rifle part side of the mount, and the mount's just screwed on with uh, lots and lots and lots of screws. And then we've got a ball here, and these two go together and pivot. 
So the elevation adjustment is pretty easy. Set the pointer to roughly where you want it elevation wise with uh, the mount done up tight. So uh, your clamping screw done up tight and then the thumb screw done up tight. Shoot a group, see where it is. If it's too low, you want to bring up the point of impact. So what you do is you loosen off this, loosen off your, uh, your screw that you've decided you're gonna use for vertical clamping. And then you can adjust this screw and by unscrewing it, you'll pivot the mount up at the back, which will bring the rifle barrel up. Now I'm not gonna turn this one because it is zeroed for me, but uh, anti-clockwise points the scope further down, so brings the bullet impact up. Clockwise points the scope further up, brings the bullet impact down. So, when you uh, test, don't shoot it with the mount loose. So once you've made an adjustment and you'll have to see on your rifle how much, uh, how much adjustment there is, it's really do it by feel. Tighten the mount back down. Tighten it back up. Another group, rinse and repeat until you're satisfied enough. Um, these are fairly coarse screws, so you're not gonna be able to get a really fine zero on that. That you do with the drum. Now, unfortunately, there's no screws for windage. So uh, how we do that is a little bit more complicated. So big screw loose, oops, all the way off. The screw you've decided to use for clamping vertically, again, for me, the bottom one, loose, pivot the mount off. And what we've got here for windage is a pair of tongues. You like tongue? Now, normally when these are produced in the factory, they're too long, deliberately too long, which is why the, uh, the reticle often ends up miles over to the left. So by filing them down evenly, you can make the back end of the scope move to the right which brings the rifle barrel around to the right so that your reticle can follow. Now, uh, one of the tests for a fake one is whether it's got uh, machining marks there that are different from, from there or filing marks. And uh, this one has been machined to fit. But, um, if you ever need to adjust the tilt for whatever reason, which you shouldn't, but you can, uh, you can always file these asymmetrically. Now, if you're unlucky and your pointer is too far over to the right, so you want to bring the back end of the scope to the left so that the point of impact moves left and you can bring the, uh, the reticle back to the center, you can shim it. So what you do there is you get a piece of shim material and you would put it in there underneath those tongues and then uh, tighten the mount down on it. And you just have to uh, experiment with thicknesses, just buy lots of different types of shim stock and uh, find whatever works best for you to get the pointer more or less in the middle. So once you've got the scope and mount set up to your liking, you can uh, loosen these clamping screws, and there's some on the uh, windage drum as well, and adjust the scale to read exactly what you want it to read so that you can get back to where you want to be. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe to TFB TV. Please consider supporting us on Patreon. And many, many thanks to our sponsors, Proxybit and Venturi Munitions, who helped to make the channel possible. Bye.